West, I know, a man can get hurt in a lot of ways. Trampled, shot, hung, busted up, starved, die of thirst, ride by Indians. A lot of dangers. Most dangerous of all, well, let me put it this way. I knew a fellow once. He was the fastest gun in the West. Threw the strongest punch in the West. Had the richest gold claim in the West. He also had the softest head in the West. Didn't know real danger when he saw it. And real danger, friend, is a woman. Personally, I'm allergic to danger and to trouble. My name's Destry, and I've made a great discovery. Actually, I've made several. Peace is quieter than war. Tranquility is nicer than trouble. A soft answer turneth away wrath. I've been hunting for a fellow named Charlie Bent who framed me and sent me to Texas State Prison for three years. I figured to find him one of these days. That was trouble. Then I got to thinking about trouble and women when I was heading to Wayward on the way to the border. Trouble, women, and Stormy. And how Stormy came to Wayward about eight years ago in the middle of a cloudburst. Dry on, don't we? Less than an hour old, almost rain soaked to death. What are you trying to do? Kill it? <laughs> Where'd you get it? <clears throat> Mrs. Tuttle, the woman whose man was killed last month. Only I don't reckon she had a chance to see a kid. She died, Bessie. That baby you got there ain't got no one. Nobody but you. You're going. Well, I thought we'd take up a collection. At least we can do is support it, seeing as how you're going to raise it. <laughs> Are you crazy? I got a saloon to run. Bessie! There's a girl, baby. And you're a woman. Ain't that right, fellas? Ah, yeah. oh, shut up, you big ape. You're, you're scaring the baby. Scaring my baby.
Bessie got Stormy eight years ago. Seven years ago, the vein ran out. Gold went away and the miners went away. But Wayward's still there, such as it is. Hit me. You're busted. Or to St. Michael, do I come and get it? You sit still, Stormy. It's a pleasure to have someone acting like a customer. And just what do you think I am? I know what you are. One Sasparelli. Coming up. Great. Can mm. I hand a black black? Did you take my marker? No. Aw. Oh. Why don't you go out and play? There ain't nobody out there to play with. How many times you... Your mom and I gotta tell you, there isn't nobody out there. Well, stage me by pretty quick. Now, don't liven things up. Still winning? Oh, sure. Most of the time. Are you still here? You might as well get used to me. I'd rather get used to the plague. Ah, come here. Now, stop it. I don't want Stormy to no, think that no, you... No, no, Stormy's too young to think. Stop you let it. her go, Bender. Oh, man, how would you like to eat this bunk star? Never mind, Ike. I can handle them. Now, why don't you just leave? I'm going to meet some friends here. You should be grateful I'm bringing a business. I really don't care about the business you bring. Especially oh, girl. Why don't you get smart? Come to Netma with me. I wouldn't walk across the street with trash like you. Now, you listen and listen good. I'm getting awful tired. Well, I'm here. Where's the party? Death tree! <laughs> <laughs> and who is this? <laughs> well, now, which one of those two kisses did I enjoy the most? Howdy, Ike. How are you? Pretty fine. On the house. Well, thank you. As it happens, I would have had a hard time paying for it myself. <laughs> Is that what it takes to get this house to buy a drink? What's that, friend? Wander in here busted with a big kiss for the, uh, the lady who owns the place. Well, uh, it worked, didn't it? Ah, forget him. <laughs> he was born with a saddle sore where his brain ought to be. Are you going to stay, Death Yeah, with you. After the way you cleaned me out of blackjack last year, I should say not. No, sir. Oh, we missed you, Death You know you were a better letter writer when you were in prison. I had more time on my hands when I was in prison. I, uh... I don't know how long it's been since you were around these parts, Mr. Uh... Destry. Yeah, Destry. There's one thing you should understand. Bessie's my woman now. You don't say. You heard me. Well, for pity's sake, Bess, the least you might have done was tell me. There's nothing to tell. <laughs> this loudmouth just like to hear himself talk. He hangs around Bartha and Ma. You do that, mister? I don't like to see her talking to jailbirds. Mm-hmm. Well, you might ask how come I became a jailbird. Chances are you beat up on some poor little milk toast ribbon clerk. Nothing so violent. Actually, I killed a couple of loudmouth fellows who were bothering a female friend of mine in a saloon just like this. Well, Bess, looks like you got a real rough one there. He thinks he is. Is he really bothering you? Oh, he wants me to close up and run away to Denver with him. With him? Yeah. Oh, I've seen you sweep out better men than that with a sawdust. <laughs> You're right. Which reminds me, Ike. Yeah? You do me a favor, go outside, get my bags off the horse. Sure thing. You didn't think I'd forget you, did you? Oh, Jeffrey, you shouldn't have. Why not? Because I've never known you to have two coins even rubbed together. And who wants to stand around rubbing coins together? Besides, a man can't buy things for folks he loves. What's money for? Jack. I mean, besides that. I wish you meant that, Destry. 
Meant what? That about people you love. I sure have, Mr. Destry. I'm here, ain't I? My golly, Destry. The bags are getting thinner every year. That's because my shirts are wearing out, Ike. Give me those bags. Well, now, let's see what we have here. Well, here's something for you. Hair grease. You get a little thinner than you were last time I saw you. Oh, don't worry. If I lose any more, I'll just grow my mustache back and smear it on there. Yeah. Here's something for you, Bess. <gasps> Perfume from Paris. Away at Texarkana. See, that lady there said it was a man killer. I got her to demonstrate it. She was right. Oh. I bet she was. Uh, yes, miss? Didn't you forget something? Well, I don't think so. Let me see. I got the horse. A gun, bags, uh, bless my soul, stowaway. <laughs> yeah, it's not very fancy, but I'm told it's durable. <laughs> it better be. But she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do you think she can play black jack? Well, she's had a very strict upbringing to now, but I suppose you can teach her. <laughs> Now, what can I do for you? Uh, dinner? Your room? Try, um, try my bath. A hot bath. So! Beastly country. Oh, Anthony. You say the same thing about Philadelphia. Or any place. It isn't Boston. Still, hardly the proper environment for a tuttle of Boston. Provided the child really is my granddaughter. No, oh, I'm certain she is, sir. I, I, I'd almost wager on it. We shall see, Anthony. Of course, after eight years, the woman who's raised her might not want to let her go. The woman, sir, according to my professional informants, is nothing but a common saloon female. Ah. Saloon women can be formidable adversaries. I'm sure I wouldn't know. I'd be surprised if you did. The character of the Hawkins woman aside, however, if I'm satisfied that the child really is my granddaughter, I shall not return to Boston without her. So this is Wayward. Barbaric. More than two hours behind schedule. Inexcusable. There you are, gents, but what you're doing here is beyond me. And beyond me. Ready in five minutes, boys. Well, 
Welcome to Wayward, Jeff. Mule deer steak, fried potatoes, and roughest coffee in your territory. Don't have to go. It sounds adequate, madame. joining us. Mm. It is Miss Hawkins, That's is it? That's right. Please. Thank you. No doubt, uh, no doubt you're wondering why we're staying over in your interesting little town. Hmm. Well, we don't even get drummers staying over very much anymore. But I'm glad to have you, Mr. Tuttle. Tuttle. Archibald Tuttle of Boston. This is my sister, Anthony Payne. Howdy. Thank you. My name means nothing to you. Well, <clears throat> if I were a man, I wouldn't want a title like uh, Archibald around here. My last name, Madame, Tuttle. Mm. Anthony, the photo, please. I'm out here on business, Miss Hawkins. Uh, but first, let me tell you that I owe you a very great deal, and I shan't forget it. I don't see how you could owe me for anything but a meal. I believe you knew this young man. And the young woman, too. Not sure. Of course, it is an old photo and quite worn, but the likenesses are good. The young man is, was my son. And the girl is his bride. For ten years, I've tried to locate them. Recently, we learned that John Tuttle died here eight years ago. According to my information, he was killed in a mining accident. Not far from here. Yeah, well, mining's a rather dangerous business, Mr. Payne. When the mines were open, lots of people got killed and injured. The young lady... Well, I'm afraid I didn't approve of her. That's why they came west. Oh. Surely you must have known the Tuttles in a small town like this. <laughs> well, people come and go, Mr. Payne. I understand there was a child. Well... Eight years ago, there were over 1,500 men, women, and children in this town, Mr. Tuttle. Child was born a few weeks after John Tuttle died. Mother died about the same time, probably in childbirth. Isn't it true, Miss Hawkins, that you are harboring an eight-year-old girl, child? I have an eight-year-old daughter, yeah. Named Stormy. That's right, Stormy. Stormy Hawkins. You claim she's your daughter. I think you'd better leave, Mr. Payne. Please, please, Miss Hawkins. Anthony is quite thorough, but very rude. I apologize. The fact is, I came out here because I have reliable information that the child, Stormy, is my son John's daughter. She is mine. This is very difficult for you. Uh, after all, you raised her. But isn't that what a mother's supposed to do? If Miss Hawkins, I'd be interested in seeing some proof of your claim. A birth certificate, for instance. Well, nobody kept any records around here, then or now. Well, then perhaps an affidavit from the father. Uh, where is the father, Miss Hawkins? Uh, he's away. And my... And the child? She's out playing. Well, alone. It's hardly the way to care for an eight-year-old. Oh, no, no. She's not alone. I see. Who's with her? Uh, her father. But I thought you said he was away. Yeah. Well, he is. With her. Uh, his name's Destry. Knowing we were going to have to go all the way to the next territory, I'd have brought along a buggy. I guess I could ride. He always said a miner could give a cowboy aces and queens and club him to death with a pair of deuces. You'd be a sensation in polite society. <laughs> Pardon me, ladies, but is them flowers for sale? You taken to paying for things these days, Travers? Well, if it ain't old Destry. 
What are you doing around here, Travers? Nothing left to steal. I got business here. And don't you get in my way. You got business in Wayward? Any objections? Some. That's a shame. Tell me about them sometime. Are they friends of yours, Destry? No, honey. Not exactly friends. Let's go down by the stream. Some other time. I think we better get back. think, Anthony? About what? Miss Hawkins' story. Oh, I think she's lying. Oh, Anthony, you think everyone's lying. Well, so you see her character. No, I don't. All I see is a woman having a hard time. I've been a little skeptical about this from the beginning, ever since that miner came to my office in Boston. Everything he said was borne out by the Pinkerton, sir. Yes, yes, I know. Even so, the burden of proof is on us, without witnesses or records. Miss Hawkins could be telling the truth. I was really counting on that express job. Yeah, so was I. But if the express company doesn't put the money in the safe, there's no sense hitting it. I bet a hunch something's gonna turn up. But if it don't, we'd better head for Denver. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So far, she don't feel the same way about me. Look at Ma! Well, ain't they pretty? <laughs> If they're me. I bet you're stormy. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's Mr. Tuttle, Mr. Payne from Boston. This is Destry. Oh, you're uh, the friend of the family. That's right. How do you do? Howdy. Well, Stormy, I must say you're a very pretty girl. I ain't a girl. I'm a minor. Oh. Stormy, go put these in water, will you? Okay, Mom. Boston. Is that in Kansas or Missouri? Massachusetts. <laughs> well, it isn't very often that Bessie gets folks from the East here. You planning to stay long? We certainly hope not. Just long enough to settle a, a, a question. Well, I hope you enjoy your time here. Thank you, sir. Ike? Here's for your best girlfriend. And how about giving me some of that sump water you call whiskey? One for me, too, please. Uh, Destry, I'd be honored if you'd let me pay. Consider yourself honored. Why wouldn't you do that, Mr. Tuttle? Do what, sir? Well, there are at least two fellas here that would brain you for that silk necktie you got. Let alone all that money. Mr. Destry, the child, Stormy, seems very much attached to you. We're old friends. Now, it's kind of you to say so. Well, you know how it is, uh... I've been a friend to her mother for a long time. That's how it started. Yeah. And whenever I'm in the territory, I make it a point to drop by. Well, I must say, you seem to take the responsibilities of fatherhood very lightly. Well, I have to keep moving her. I do what? Oh, Desti, I, I know I promised not to tell. But uh, this morning, it just all <laughs> spilled out. Well, does it have to spill out over me? Does uh, Stormy know about all this? I surely hope not. Well, no, I've been keeping it from her. But as soon as we get married, I plan to tell her. I, I never heard of anything so, so licentious. Oh, well, you see, Dusty travels a lot. And, uh, well, we just never got around to the uh, formalities. Well, I guess you could call them that. Of course, uh, 
We've often talked about marriage, haven't we, Destry? And we're going to talk about it again right now. If you'll excuse us, gentlemen. I bring a bottle and two glasses. She's lying, sir. I'm beginning to think you're right, Anthony. Did you notice the child? I mean, closely. She even looks like my son. That still isn't proof enough, sir. We shall see, Anthony. We shall see. Well, start explaining, and it better be good. Ah, pour the man a drink. He just became a father. Congratulations! Now stop that. What did I ever do to you? Why, Mr. Tastry? You cut that out now. What's going on here? It's Tuttle. He's come to take Stormy away. He's her grandfather. Oh. Sorry, Bess. Still, that doesn't give you the right to... to make an honest man out of me. can't have her. That's why I lied, so I'm gonna keep on lying. I don't know. It really is her grandfather. What I've seen of his wallet, he might be very good for. Her. Better than me, her mother. Be honest with yourself, Bess. You're not a real mother. Oh, yes, I am, Desi. Her real mother. She came to me when she was an hour old. Oh, I didn't want to be with her. I took her. I'm the only mother she's ever known. And I love her. And no rich Boston. No, I'm gonna come on, take her from me. Oh, Destry, at the stage will be here day after tomorrow. Stand by with me until then. Tuttle will be on it. And then I can keep my baby. I... You'll trust me for it. Drinks for the house. How come? Well, isn't that what a new father's supposed to do? Tuttle. I don't believe Mr. Tuttle can see you now. Nonsense, Anthony. Show the gentleman in. <laughs> it's rather pretty, don't you think, gentlemen? Looks a mite small to me. <laughs> Shut up, stupid. It's for the kid. That's right. Just a little present for her. Uh. Now, what can I do for you? Mr. Tuttle, we understand you figure that kid of Bessie's is your granddaughter? Seems to be a strong probability. That's what you come out here from the East for, to take her back, huh? That's correct. But you're not sure, huh? I'm afraid there's no way to be sure. Suppose I could get you the proof that uh, you want. Would it be worth, say, um, five thousand dollars? If you gentlemen can produce incontrovertible proof that Stormy is my late son's daughter, yes, I will pay you $5,000. Then you'll get it. It ain't Destry's kid. I'll start with that. Destry's an ex-convict out of Texas State Prison. I'm not interested in whose child Stormy is not. I want to be sure whose child she is. What sort of evidence have you in mind? I'd rather not talk about it until I have it, which won't be long. Very uh, well. Then at that time, I'll keep my part of the bargain. Good night, gentlemen. Well, uh, good night. Stoney and me don't understand. What, what kind of evidence you're going to give the old man? I've been thinking. He was counting on that express company job, but it didn't pan out, right? Yeah, that's why I say we should go to Denver. Sam, for a guy who's always telling us how much he thinks, you think less than even Stoney here does. 
And the old man's willing to pay us $5,000 just for information about the kid. I got a feeling he might go as high as 10000 to the kid herself. That is, if uh, some deserving, out-of-work uh, bank robbers was to borrow her. <laughs> I join you, Mr. Deftry. Glad to have you, Mr. Tuttle. Ike, would you bring us a drink, please? Miss uh, Hawkins will be down very shortly. She's helping my Stormy and James into a dress. Stormy in a dress? <laughs> I'd just soon try to put horseshoes in a wildcat. Mr. Destry, I know you're not the child's father. Mr. Travers told me. He also offered to sell me proof that Stormy's my granddaughter. How much did you say you'd pay him? Five thousand dollars. Cash? That would be the understanding. Mr. Tuttle, Travis thinks you've got five thousand in cash. Anybody could have put on paper. Nobody could. Seems Travers tried to sell the old gentleman some kind of positive proof. That does it. I want to get my shotgun and start cleaning them out. No, I... I'll go talk to him. I don't know about the others, but... Travers can be mean. And you'll need help? Oh, no, I... Uh, I can be meaner. Wondering if you boys would do me a favor. Like what? Like mount up and get out of town within the hour. <laughs> Did I say something funny? You're talking awful big all of a sudden. Travis, I remember when you first came to the prison. You used to talk awful big. Kept telling everybody you were the toughest bare knuckle fight in the state. Didn't you get your jaw broke? You were lucky. Pretty lucky with guns, too. Are you gonna let him get away with this? About that, Travis. <laughs> Are you? Fair out, Destry. We're not bothering you. Oh, you mean to bother somebody, or you wouldn't be here. This is a free country. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see you cover a whole lot of it. Uh, within the hour? We're real tired, Mr. Destry. Where are we supposed to sleep? Well, you just be sure it's not here, mister. You just be sure of that. Well, what happened to you? You scared him? One more cowpoke. We could have jumped him. Sure we could. Blown the whole thing sky high. Take care of Destry when the time comes. In the meantime, I take all the lip he wants to hand out. Ah, trade, ten thousand dollars, cold cash. 
Oh, that seems to make sense. There's something else I want besides the money. Yeah, what's that? Bessie. <laughs> Don't laugh. Well, I reckon we could have her thrown in to sweeten the pot. Good. You two just remember, hmm? She's mine. Don't you worry about it, Sam. Our weakness is, um, money. What's them lumps, Ike? Oatmeal. What do you think they was? Nuggets? She was so beautiful. She still is. Mr. Tuttle, assuming Stormy was your grandchild, just for the sake of discussion, what would you do for her? Well, Mr. Dastre, I'm a fairly wealthy man. I have no family except her. Assuming? Yes, of course, assuming. Well, she'd live with me on my estate. She'd have the best of care, clothes, her own horse. I understand she likes to ride. Fine finishing school eventually. Marriage to an upstanding, educated young man. And a grandfather who would die for her. You make it all sound very pretty. There's just a little matter of love. You think I wouldn't love her? I think you do love her. Only she loves her mother. Well, that's Bessie, in case you forgot. What about her? Mr. Tuttle would make arrangements to repay her for any expenses she incurred while raising the child. Would you do that little thing, Mr. Tuttle? Anthony, you sometimes say things that make me wonder if you were really born in Boston. Mr. Destry, you're very close to Miss Hawkins. Now, what do you think she wants? Her daughter. Morning, sweetie. Miss Hawkins. More coffee? Um, no. Won't you sit down, Miss Hawkins? I apologize about the dress. I suppose that falls into the category of dirty pool. Yes, it did. I assure you, I only did it out of love for my son. Mr. Tuttle, your son is dead. What good is your love going to do him now? What about her? You mean your daughter? Yes, my daughter. Bess, Mr. Tuttle's come a long way. Uh, even if Stormy isn't his grandchild, he did have a son. Why don't you and Stormy take him out there, to where he rests? You'd like that, wouldn't you, sir? I'd like that very much, sir. Well, it's not far. Stormy, come here. Mr. Destry, thank you from my heart. together, Miss Hawkins. I guess so. I... I didn't really know them very well. Your son never came around my place very much. Ma says how she puts fresh flowers on them every week. She said they are real nice people. That was nice. She said I've liked them very much. Stormy, run down the road and pick some more flowers. That was very nice of you, Miss Hawkins. Speak so highly to your... to your daughter about 
two strangers buried way out here. And having her put flowers here, that was very unselfish of you. Miss Hawkins, how'd my daughter-in-law die? Childbirth, wasn't it? Stormy? Of course it was Stormy. It's all right. It's quite all right. You love her. I like you about her. And Esther. I didn't want to lose her. But then when I saw her in that beautiful dress that you brought her, oh, I knew it wasn't fair for her to stay here. She needs so much that I can't give her. So, when the stage comes, she'll be honored. With you. <laughs> Because you ain't been looking in the right places. Have you seen her? Yeah, I've seen her. Where have you seen her, Travis? She's with my friend. What? Now, don't get excited if you want to see her again. You took her. <laughs> That's right. Of course, uh, we ain't much good at kidnapping, not having much experience in those lines. I want her back. We figured you would. <laughs> in cases like this, though, you got to be careful. People could get hurt, especially uh, kids. Give me a drink. Yeah. People could get hurt. I said, give me a drink! Stoney's kind of the nervous type. If somebody was to try busting in there like old Destry here, I can't tell what might happen. How much do you want? Ten thousand dollars. Cash. Right now, I don't have it. You think people carry around that much cash? I see these roll. I have a little better than five thousand cash. It's yours. Ten. You'd have to go all the way to Denver to get that much cash. Use what brains you've got, Travis. All right, how much you got? All of you, put together. I right, give him the cash box. Being robbed, but I'll take it. And the watch. No, you won't. Let him have it, son. No, sir. You don't care what happens to the kid, do you? You bet I do. That's why I'm going to take this money to wherever you got it. You let him walk out of here with all that loot, he'll just keep on going. The others will still have Stormy. Then she could really be hurt. You're pretty smart. I remember you, Travis. All right, Destry, you bring the money. The old conniption mine office in the south of town in half an hour. But leave your gun here. Hmm? Oh, uh, one more thing. You. Put some things in a bag. Come along. Sam Bender wants you to take a little trip with him. What sort of a trip? It's all right. Give me time to pack. But you can't do that. Of course I can. That's my child out there. Go off with a man like Bender. What difference does it make what kind of a man he is? <laughs> and, um, that's three. I'm gonna enjoy it. If they hurt her, I'll kill them. She'll be all right. Remember what I told you. Oh, I can handle a dozen sand benders. What about you? Travis hates you. Well, if nothing else, that speaks highly of my character.
Here they come. Hello? Yeah, they're alone. Are you sure? I can see, can't I? Come in. Stormy? You in there? She's in here, all right. I'll hear it from her. I'm here, Ma. Stormy, are you all right? Of course I am. Oh, you big case. What are you trying to do? Cut off a circulation? That's the money? That's it. Come on, Dusty. Come up with a gun. When I yell, duck. I reckon I'll have to find some other excuse to shoot you. I reckon you will. Well, you got your money. Now can they leave? What's your hurry? It's all done, Travis. Let's go. Bessie, girl. What do you got in the bag, hmm? Some uh, cute little fancies you're gonna wear for me? In here? Nothing in here, but a gun. Come with us, Dusty. Well, you can't tell. I might drop by sometime. Come on, get up there, young lady. Mr. Dusty? I came out here after a granddaughter. And thanks to you, I'm taking home a daughter besides. My pleasure, Mr. Tuttle. A small token of appreciation from a very happy man. Goodbye, Ike. Been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. I never owned a saloon before. Enjoy it. But don't drink up all the profit. You won't need these in Boston. Besides, it isn't ladylike to play blackjack. Dusty, you are no good backstabbing sneak thief who ain't got no manners whatsoever. Uh-huh. Who hasn't got any manners whatsoever, sweet? How do you like that? I'm not even out of town yet, and he's already trying to make a girl out of me. Take her away. Yeah, get up there. Yeah. Well, Ike, I guess that's that. Yeah, dang, if I ain't gonna miss all of them. Imagine old man something buying me this whole saloon. You know, I always wanted a saloon. Well, I think I'm going to miss Mr. Tuttle myself. Tell you what, I'll buy drinks for the house, both of us. You got any money? Oh, oh I have a little check here. How about some cash? You know I don't have oh, any I'm cash. Sorry, Destry. No credit, no checks cashed. Drop in with some uh, jingling money sometime. Besides, we hardly got enough booze here for one.
Thank you.